Can you please state your name first? Annie. And and Annie, if you mind me asking, what what was the date of your birth? Oh, wow! You won't believe what I tell you. Nineteen thirty-three. April 14, 1933. Uh, my name is Sharoma Lang. I was born August the thirty-first. 1955. Hattie Chris, October the 10th, 1929. Vicky Chaplin, 32552. Julian Fisher, April 12th, 1980. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, first question. Can you tell me what family means to you? Family? Family means no matter how poor, no matter the hardships, you stay together. That's what I think of it. Um, family to me is not blood. It is who you choose sometimes in your life to be there. Um, people that you love and that you were there for through thick and thin. So can you tell me a, um, a time when your family has helped you grow as a person? Since mama, when mama died so early. The older children had to take care of the younger one. And there's one that went to Bible college. And she taught me by that Bible. She helped me to go by knowing the Word of God. She would talk to me. She would say, you must be sweet. You must love people, period. Love people. She would say, here, and don't hear, see, and don't see. Don't carry no news to make no fuss. Keep it to yourself. That's the way she would teach me. It's the more thing that I don't remember all now, but she would take me to church as I grew up so I could hear the word. Then I would take myself and hear the word of God. I grew up by her teaching me how to be, and how to live, and how to love God, you know, in the godly way. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a Hispanic family, and so even from a young age, I was always taught to respect your elders, and that um, it doesn't matter what happens, that you take care of each other. And so I think that's helped me to develop as a person as far as caring about people that are around me. I was taught that you don't look at um, the color of your skin, you don't look at age, you just love people. And um, I think that's why I do what I do. Um, tell me a story about when you or your family overcame a challenge. Well, we've had, uh, uh, when we all at home once, we lost. I lost my older brother. We all band together, and we got through that. We got over that. Um, I had a sister who's still all at home who had a leg amputated, and the doctor had us all afraid and uh, say she didn't have but seven years to live. But she, that's when she was 18. She's 67 now, so the doctors don't always know what they're talking about. So. I mean, there was a point when I was pregnant with my daughter, I wasn't married, and my grandfather didn't talk to me for almost a year. And learning to work with my grandma and my cousins and everybody and kind of overcome that, um, and having him come around, that was definitely a challenge, but I never stopped loving him or trying to talk to him. Do you think the essence of a family is still alive today? Um, not as close-knit because um, everybody has everything they want or need. And um, we had people, there were at times that we had people, you know they talk about homeless people now? We never had homeless people because I took in, if somebody was homeless, we took them in. If somebody else was homeless, they took them in. So it was no people that I knew of lived on the streets. So family was really, uh, rare supported during my growing up days. Um, 
in a certain sense it is. I try and, especially with my family, we all try and keep it alive. Um, but these have messed up family, in my opinion. With, people, with all the electronics and everything, you sit at a dinner table, you go to a restaurant, you see people sitting around, and they're on their phones or tablets, or you know they go home and they're on the internet right away. And I think people forget just how to sit down and have a conversation. Why do you think that's changed? Technology. A sign of the time. The times have changed. People don't don't even uh, enjoy each other like they used to. We used to enjoy being with people or among people. Now people are more selfish because because of technology. So you think technology is the main factor in driving people apart? Too? Yes. Can you tell me an event or a story that shaped you as a person? Well, I tell people, uh, and I, I read a lot of history, um, and I come to understand life, the greatest wisdom, the greatest knowledge is of yourself. So if you know you, then I can say anything about you and it won't face you. Cause you know you. So uh, I try and know myself, um, whatever, I was going somewhere with this. Where was I at? I might, this is a side effect of my medication. So <laughs> where I forget right in the middle. Um, but yeah, you go through life, you just, you understand, you know, that's the greatest wisdom, is the wisdom of yourself. That way nobody else, you can listen. You don't have to go crazy when other people go crazy. You let them go by themselves. See? So, and you learn these things growing up, because you probably didn't try it. I'd have probably tried all of them, going crazy, didn't work. So, <laughs> you know, um, uh, and I think every every soul seek peace. You know, and that's I think that's the essential of every human being is to have a peaceful heart. You know, so. I've been in a wheelchair since 1980, so I haven't been able to function very good. I'm starting to walk with a wheelchair or walk a little bit, but otherwise I'm in this chair. Um, I just try to get stronger every day, just work on exercise, everything, to make me move my legs more. I'm starting PT and OT, so it's just been a long haul. Um, I had my stomach stapled and Messed up my surgery. Messed up the nerves in my legs, and afterwards I couldn't walk. And I walk sits. I walk a little bit around the house. I don't go out and walk yet. So. Do you think the way the world looks at you is different now than when you could walk and move around by yourself? Yeah. Why? Because I get a lot of people's remarks and stuff about me being big and in a wheelchair or using a walker or get a lot of people's attitude. Some are good, some are bad. So you think it's because they only have their point of view and not yours? They only have a single story that they're working on? Yeah, I think so. Because they don't know what I've gone through, or, you know. Yeah, they don't know what I've gone through. They, they can't be in my shoes, they can't be know about it. They don't know about it. See what has happened. If, if there is one message you could leave for the next generation, what would you tell them? Learn from 
from your elders. Listen, listen to your parents. Uh, there's days that I, even today I'm like, oh my gosh, I sound just like my mom. I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> you know, so I, I used to, you know, say, oh, I'm never going to be like that. And then I'm like, oh, I just said that. Um, but history books are one thing. If you can sit down and talk to other people, though, and actually get real life experience and what they've gone through, I think it's so important to learn from others. And I think people forget to learn. They think, oh, I'll just Google it. But not everything on the internet is real. So just sit down and have conversations and talk to people. Learn from them. Learn from others' mistakes. Don't make your own. But when you do make a mistake, learn from it and grow. All right. That was awesome. I think that was it. Thank God's word. Love your enemy. Love them anyway. Love them. No matter how they treat you. Love your enemy. Be bless those that curse you. Be good to those that hate you. And pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. No matter how people treat you. Love them anyway. You must love one another. Be good to one another. Yeah, and don't say no bad words and so forth, you know. <laughs> yeah. Say what you mean and mean what you say, and don't back down. I will let them know every day ain't the same. Some days you the bug, and some days you the windshield. You can't be them all the time. <laughs> all right, Jerome, that was awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? You no. come back. Right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs>